So we're looking at the did you we're looking at the after treatment injector. And that's the that's the back of it there coming in. And that's the little nozzle. I'm gonna hold the flashlight right there. And this is the area in here where the end of my ink pen is. And it up in there. Right there. That little area there where it gets filled with soot. Right in the very, very center, right there. Right there is the, the tip of the nozzle. And you can see it's uh, it's pretty bad. I've seen them so bad, well, you couldn't see this. This whole thing was gone. It was like caked over. I've seen them that bad. Trucks come right out of the shop with a DPF cleaning. And they say they fixed their truck. And it's be so bad that fuel can't even come out of it anymore. So mine just came out of the shop oh. a little over a this, month ago. This one's not terribly bad. If I had to guess it, I'd say that one had uh, 150,000 miles on it, maybe. You can tell somebody's changed it on your truck once, at least. So, and you still got the old style, so it was a while back, because they've changed the style on those now. So it's been a while. So, I'd give it 150,000, maybe 200,000 on that injector, guessing it the way it looks. So, it's not in great shape. It probably still functions a bit because you can still see the nozzle tip underneath the carbon where there's mm -hmm. a hole. But, uh, you know, it's up to you if you want to change it. I would say maybe in the next 100,000 at the most to change it. Now, to change this, <clears throat> you have to drain the coolant from the, you have to drain the coolant from the radiator. Uh, and most radiators have somewhere at the base, I don't know where this one is at, mine's right here, on my truck, but almost all these radiators somewhere have uh, on the bottom a place to drain them. Point where yours was again? Uh, mine on my truck is right here, coming out with a little valve. Gotcha. So, I don't know where it's at on this truck, but we're not going to do it because you still got I'd say a hundred thousand miles left on this one. So, since it's a big job, three buckets of coolant, three five-gallon buckets, fifteen gallons of coolant. You know, you're talking about a couple of hours to drain it and fill it up, plus changing that out. So, yours is okay for now. We'll do a forced regen on it if you want to, just to make sure. And see, make sure your HPA reading is low. The DPF has a sensor, differential pressure sensor. It looks just like that one up on the mm -hmm. on the uh, intake. Yeah. It's called the after treatment differential pressure sensor, or the delta P for the after treatment, and it does the same thing. Checks the flow, pressure from the face to the back, and it's got an HPA reading. It reads in HPA, and uh, actually I think it's KHPA, but it says HPA in the software. Uh, anything for 3.0, if, if you get the HPA reading, is 3.0 or less, then it's not costing you any fuel at all, fuel mileage. And I've check, checked that with trucks with DPFs, and then I've removed the DPF and checked the fuel mileage both ways. And uh, 3.0 or less, you cannot tell the difference uh, if you knock the DPF off the truck, off the, you know. These guys think they're going to do an EGR delete, you know, and take that DPF can out. Well, if that can is in good shape and it's 3.0 HPA or less, you're not going to see any fuel mileage difference in that can. Right. So, keep it healthy. Keep it under 3.0 with a good injector. You know, it just works. Okay. Uh, above 3.0, it starts to cost you fuel. At 4.0, you start to notice it. Yeah. You know, it's more than just a couple of three tenths. At 5.0... It gives you problems. Mm -hmm. Six, seven, eight. I think at eight it starts to shut you down. That's kind of how it works. A brand new one's supposed to check 1.0, between 1.0 and 1.5. And there's software for that, engine software, to mm -hmm. reset one. If you take one off and have it clean, put it on, then you need to go with an engine software. And tell the engine that you've cleaned it because what happens is over time the engine records those numbers. And as they accumulate, it knows it mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden 
it's like four or five or seven and then all of a sudden it's one instantly the software and the engine I guess the whoever programmed the uh, whoever made the programming assumed that if it suddenly went from six or seven down to one that you've uh, knocked a hole in it mm -hmm. so there's a safety precaution for that in the software so they it throws an alarm okay. unless you go in the software and reset it and tell you tell it that you put a new can in there right. new DPF so your truck wasn't that bad uh, thankfully for the number of miles that was on it and I'll probably I'll tell you probably why because you have a Peterbilt you've got uh, pyro and you've got uh, intake pressure, intake manifold, boost pressure. Because you have those gauges in your dash, mechanics will notice that those gauges are wrong and say, hey look, this gauge is reading crazy. And those gauges are run, the boost pressure gauges run directly from the IMAP on this engine. So guess what they do? They change the IMAP sensor. Well, they clean it. And then they find out, oh, well, let's clean the Venturi. And uh, same thing with the uh, pyro. Um, they see the pyros off, so they start digging around in the exhaust, and they, you know, they find the after treatment or the uh, back pressure. Or, you know, they'll usually catch those kind of errors as secondary problems to those sense those gauges in the dash. You get like a Volvo or International or something like that, or a truck that don't have those extra gauges, mm -hmm. and the mechanics will scratch their heads, just like I said. They'll blame the turbo, they'll blame the HR valve, they'll blame the DPF, and they'll just say the truck is basically junk. Right. And uh, it's not. Um, you're also fortunate enough that uh, you're not losing coolant. I don't. Okay. It's dry, it's not caked up, mm -hmm. it's not carbonized. So it's not through your HR cooler. Okay. It's somewhere else, and it's not here either. You can see that it's not there either. Because right. the after treatment injector can actually leak coolant right into the exhaust pipe. Oh, okay. Because it, it, on its face, it has coolant right. running through it. Okay. So if you're losing some coolant somewhere, you need to find out where. It might be your bunk core or something. Mm -hmm. you, you ever smell it in the cab? I smell fumes coming out of the, uh, the AC ducts. Yeah, so you know, somewhere you're losing it slowly. So, But, uh, it's not there and you're not burning it because uh, that's too clean so okay. that's your EGR cooler from there all the way back in there and uh, as like I said in my in my uh, internet forums uh, I was told I went to Jamestown New York engine plant where they build these and was told by one of the engineers I asked them in 2010 I asked one of the guys, and I said, uh, what's the failure rate of these? And he says, it's about 80% on a brand new engine, on the HR cooler. Because everybody's like, oh, your HR cooler's leaking, and it's causing you everything to get screwed up. Well, it does cause everything to get screwed up if it leaks. But I asked him why. He says, well, because the whole exhaust side of the engine block, when the, when the engine is new, it's metal. It's not stone. It's not ceramic. It's metal. Metal warps and hardens and settles over time. And the exhaust side of an engine block... Uh, takes a lot of heat expansion, and, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred degrees, and then back down to nothing like today, uh, over and over, and it causes it to warp, and that thing's mounted to the engine block, and it stresses it, and they said it's about an eighty percent failure rate, was what I was told, um, within the first three hundred thousand, at about two hundred and eighty thousand is typically when they start to start to give any trouble. First sign of trouble, it's almost always under warranty because most people have a 400,000 mile or more warranty on their motor, so the warranty should always cover it. So it's a good sign that you see that it's been replaced. Okay, that's a, it's a high failure rate, so if yours has never been replaced, you know, either you got really, really, really lucky, which is rare, or uh, it was replaced and caught right away because this engine is, you know, the, the soot and everything. It's a good shape for the miles mm -hmm. it's got. Better than I expected. Mm -hmm. So, uh, most time they are really bad by this mileage. I yeah. mean, two fifty, three hundred. They're 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 pretty cooked. Right. Um, if I took this apart and you didn't tell me what the mileage was, I would guess two fifty or three hundred, not four hundred. So, if this did when this did go out the first time, somebody must have caught it right away. So, 
but they usually last uh, six, seven, eight hundred k the second time around. Okay. Unless you do something crazy to cause that set block to settle again. Mm -hmm. And you know what people do when they buy a used truck. When they're new, they're company trucks. They're set at 60, 62, 65. Mm -hmm. and then the first thing somebody does is they buy it used, cut the governor out to 80 or 85, and then they stomp the fuel pedal going up the mountains. And guess what that engine's going to do? It's going to settle again. And it's going to crack that cooler again mm -hmm. and cause all the problems. Yeah. Because they don't Because most people like that typically won't open their hood enough time to catch it. So right. You know they just want to go down the road. So it's uh it's in good shape. But that's how you do it. And I say okay. you would uh, you would take all these fittings and this off. Take that off. Put it in your hand. Take the injector. Two screws. The injector comes right off in your hand. Put the new one on. You'll have to usually probably put this. These, you, know, you get under here and see this up close. You'll have to take not only you'll have to take this fitting off and the one on the top, same thing. And then when there's one straight in the back, and unplug the wire, and then this will come off in your hand. Uh, when you do though, um, there's two screws that hold it on. Um, this fitting here, this nut, is actually a, an adapter to the injector. You'll usually have to take this little adapter here off. It's like a little adapter that sticks in there for that pipe. Unscrew it and put it on the new new injector because it doesn't come with the adapter. So if you go to take one back and you want to get a core charge on it, because I think they give you like 50 bucks or something, or I don't know how many much money, but they give you some money for it. The core, make sure you take the adapters off of it before you take to go to the, go to the go to the dealer or whatever to get another one. Right. So it comes with a little blue zip tie. The blue zip tie holds the wire right here to the back. To the back right there this little cover underneath. Uh, do not use a regular zip tie. Use the little blue zip tie because the little blue zip tie mm -hmm. is a uh, thousand degree zip tie. Okay. It's a special one. Right. Okay. So, so something to know. Right. I'll just chuck it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. Uh, you know, and then put it back together. Obviously, we're not gonna. Uh, that's about it for an EGR tune-up. You know, you just got to do all this, clean it out. I'm not gonna record putting it back together. I assume if you, you know, you take the time and take your time, put your stuff in trays or bolts or whatever. If you've never done it, just keep up for everything and be careful that you'll. Uh, you'll figure out how to get back together because basically it'll play my video in reverse. How about that? Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> That's it. I made a YouTube video, I think. I don't know. We'll have to find out later. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, good job. All right. Thanks for letting me borrow your truck. Yeah, not a problem. So. All right. That's it.